if I told you there's a hidden reason you might feel tired after eating meat or even just bored of it on a carnivore or high protein diet? It's not your fault. It's not that meat is bad. You might be experiencing something called meat fatigue. Never heard of it? Well, you're not alone. By the end of this video, you're going to understand what it is, why it happens, and how to fix it. And why it might just be your body's way of asking for a little root cause attention. So let's get into it. First, I just want to say this. Thank you for being curious. You clicked on a video about something you might not have even heard of before. That says something powerful about you. You're not just here for fluff. You're here for growth, for answers, for truth. And I believe truly that curiosity is one of the most important predictors of success. Because when you're curious, you're open to learning. And when you learn the right things, you start to see real change. So kudos to you. Let's keep that curiosity going. And before we get into it, hit that like button. So what is meat fatigue? Most people associate it with postprandial somnolence, a fancy term for that sluggish, sleepy feeling after a big meal, especially one high in fat and protein. Here's the traditional explanation. After a meat-heavy meal, your body diverts blood flow to the digestive system to help break down all that protein and fat. That means less blood flow and less oxygen to your brain. Hello, couch nap. On top of that, meat contains tryptophan, an amino acid that increases serotonin and eventually melatonin, your sleepy time hormone. Now, does that mean meat is bad? Absolutely not. But this is where the story starts, not where it ends, because meat fatigue can show up in many other ways. And understanding these versions might just unlock the next level in your health journey. Let's talk about something I've seen a lot in clinic and in my own life, especially with folks on the carnivore diet or doing long-term keto. Boredom, texture fatigue, palate burnout. When all you eat is meat, or mostly meat, it can sometimes feel like Groundhog Day on a plate. You miss the crunch, you miss the contrast, you miss the smells, colors, and the joy of variety. And guess what? That's not just emotional, it's neurological. Your brain craves sensory stimulation. It thrives on novelty. There's actually a term called sensory specific satiety, which means the more often you eat the same food, the less appealing it becomes for some. That's not a character flaw, that's biology. So meat fatigue might not mean your body is failing. It might just be your brain asking for stimulation. Let's go a little deeper. Some people experience meat fatigue because of digestive strain, especially when they switch to a high fat, high protein diet suddenly. Think about it. Do you have enough stomach acid to break down dense meat? Is your gallbladder releasing enough bile to emulsify fat? Are your digestive enzymes up to the task? If the answer to any of those is not quite, your body might respond with fatigue not because of the meat itself, but because the digestion process is taxing. And here's something most people don't realize. Stomach acid declines with age. Gallbladder function is often compromised after years of low fat dieting or gallstone issues. Enzyme production can suffer if your pancreas is sluggish or inflamed. So if you're new to carnivore or keto and you're feeling meat fatigue, your body might be working overtime behind the scenes. Let me share a few lesser known contributors to meat fatigue fatigue that might surprise you. Number one, electrolyte imbalances. When you drop carbs, the kidney excretes more sodium. If you're low on salt, potassium, or magnesium, your digestion and energy suffer. Number two, under eating fat. If you're eating lots of lean meat without enough fat, you're missing your main fuel source on a low carb diet. Number three, liver stress. Over time, a sluggish liver from insulin resistance can reduce your ability to process fat efficiently. Number four, histamine sensitivity. Leftover or aged meat like ground beef or slow cuts can cause fatigue in histamine sensitive individuals. These aren't common dinner table topics, but they should be. Let me take a moment to share something personal. When I first shifted to a more carnivore based lifestyle to help me manage my own health, including irritable bowel syndrome, I felt amazing until I didn't. There were a few days where I'd eat a fatty ribeye and feel almost sedated, not energized, not focused, just wiped out. At first I thought something was wrong, but it turns out I wasn't broken, I was just adapting and my fat digestion needed support. With temporary use of ox bile, more electrolytes, and a better fat to protein ratio, that fog lifted and I haven't looked back. Another thing to consider, it might not be the meat making you tired. 
it might be the size of the meal. Eating one giant meal a day, which is OMAD, might work for some people, but others, especially those with adrenal fatigue or sluggish digestion, might do better splitting their meals into two or three smaller ones. Even if you're still eating the same amount of food, your body may have an easier time managing it. So again, meat isn't the villain. It's about how and when you eat it. Let's pivot to something I've seen among long-term carnivore followers, burnout. Not just taste burnout, but mental burnout. The social pressure of eating differently. The constant explaining to friends and family. The guilt when you sip and eat something outside the plan. That mental strain can feel like fatigue. And sometimes meat becomes the scapegoat. But here's the truth. Food is fuel, yes, but it's also culture memory, joy, and connection. So if you're not building flexibility and grace into your way of eating, fatigue is inevitable. Let's talk solutions. If you're dealing with meat fatigue, here's what you can try. Add salt and electrolytes, especially sodium. Vary the cuts. Alternate between ruminants, organ meats, fish, shellfish. Change the texture. Grill it. Pan fry it. Make a broth. Slice it cold. Up the fat. Use tallow, lard, suet, butter, duck fat. Cycle your approach. Take a palate break with fasting, broths, or higher fat days. Support digestion. Use apple cider vinegar, oxbow, and HCL if needed. Prioritize sleep and stress because that may be the real source of fatigue. Is meat fatigue dangerous? Usually no. Now here are some red flags worth checking out. Persistent fatigue after every meal regardless of size, nausea or discomfort with fatty cuts, constipation or loose stools with no clear pattern, loss of appetite that doesn't return. These could point to digestive enzyme insufficiency, low stomach acid, bile salt deficiency, food sensitivities or histamine overload. You're not crazy and you're not alone. Just like I had to troubleshoot my journey, you might need to troubleshoot yours. You started this video maybe just wondering, what the heck is meat fatigue? Now look at what you know. You've explored brain science, digestion, hormones, lifestyle burnout, and how to actually fix it. That's what happens when curiosity meets truth. So don't let confusion or fatigue push you off your journey. Let it guide you to something deeper, something sustainable, something healing. And if this video helped you, or if you've ever felt meat fatigue yourself, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your story, what worked, what didn't? And if you just learned something new, drop a fire emoji so I know this video lit something up for you. Let me leave you with this. Me fatigue isn't failure, it's feedback. Is your body saying, hey, something's off. Can we tweak this? And when we listen, not with fear, but with curiosity, we grow, we heal, we transform. If you want more insight into how food, hormones, and healing connect, check out this video right here on the screen. You can also subscribe right here and share this with someone who's thinking about carnivore but worried they'll get bored or tired because now you know the truth. And when you know the root cause, you've got the power.